Um, okay, so uh, so earlier in the week, um, we discussed briefly some of the halachot of fresher truman and maestro, as it applies even when you uh, when you get uh, Israeli produce here that doesn't have a hashgacha, and we we mentioned some of the practical um, things you have to do to uh, to separate truman and maestro. Um, but just to uh, to deal with another halachic issue, one that you probably won't face, but it's uh, an interesting one to know about. Um, so when it, so. Uh, much of the produce in Israel has truma and maaser already separated uh, from it. The truma, however, um, should be given to a kohen, but obviously a kohen nowadays can't eat it because the kohanim are impure and you can only eat truma if you're pure. So what does Israel do with uh, its truma? Right, You're separating about 1% of a tremendous amount of produce, so what are you going uh, to do with it? Um, so what ends up happening... Um, for much of it is that it is fed to the animals in the zoo. Now, how did that happen? So the halacha is that truma can only be eaten by, by a, uh, a kohen. However, um, truma that is inedible to a kohen, either because it is tame, um, or because it's not human food. Um, the Mishnah's example is karshinim, vetch, which is primarily, uh, almost exclusively, uh, animal food. Uh, so, then not on, so then it can be eaten by the animal of a kohen. Um, so, there is a, a bit of a machlokas of uh, whether this would also apply to um, pure truma, which kohanim can't eat because all kohanim are impure nowadays. The position of Rav Kook and Dat Kohen is that it does not, that if you have pure truma, it's just that the kohanim are impure, it cannot be fed to animals. Rosh Hashanah Orbach, however, was of the opinion that if... The, the reason normally you can't give pure truma to the animal of a kohen is because you're destroying the truma for no reason. Um, but if all kohanim are impure, so no kohen can eat it, so then even perfectly pure truma you're allowed to give to the animal of a kohen. Ramin Chas Yitzchak has a middle position. He says that as once food has started to rot, so then you definitely can give it to a, the animal of a kohen because, again, it's not edible to the average person. Because of the position of Shlomo Zalman Arbach, and Menchus Yitzchak, and others, um, the biblical zoo in Israel, some of the other minors, the smaller zoos, uh, what they do is that they symbolically sell the zoo to a Kohen. So all the animals in the zoo are the halachic pets of said Kohen. Um, and then they feed this tremendous amount of produce that you have, which is basically free, um, because there's nothing else you can do with it, right? If you're not going to give it to the, uh, to the animals, you have to bury it, um, because, you know, that's what you have to do with, uh, with impure uh, truma. Again, how it becomes impure, if it's pure, perfectly dry, then it's still pure. Once it's become wet and touched by someone who's impure, then it's uh, impure uh, truma. But practically, despite the fact there's a machlo, because I suppose many of the, do, the zoos in Israel rely on the position of Roshom Azam Orbach um, or the, Mincha, or the Minchas Yitzchak, and that's what they do. They take this, uh, this 1% or so of uh, the produce in Israel, they send it off to the zoo, um, and that's how they solve a double problem of getting rid of this tremendous amount of produce um, and not having to, uh, to store it and having cheap food uh, in the zoos. It's not only the zoos that use this, but uh, many of the kibbutzim uh, use this uh, as well, though that caused um, an added layer of halachic problems because in kibbutzim, the legal structure is that no Kohen would own anything, right? Everything in the kibbutz is owned by the community um, and therefore legally making the animals the exclusive property of a Kohen is quite difficult and it's not totally clear whether you can feed um, truma temeya, impure truma, to an animal which is co-owned or communally owned by a Kohen uh, and and other people, another problem that was raised recently um, in one of the uh, halachic journals on agriculture in Israel is that to solve a different problem, namely that we don't want to have bechoras running around. Right? The firstborn animal um, is, is, uh, is holy, um, which creates all types of problems. So for, for many hundreds of years, the minog has been that when we have animals um, and it's about to have its firstborn, we... Uh, we sell half of it to a non-Jew, so the animal um, that's born is half owned by a Jew and half owned by a non-Jew, so it doesn't have the status of a horse, so we don't have a holy animal running around, which can cause halachic problems. Uh, but one of the problems that Rabbi Yashiv dealt with, you know, obviously before he passed away, um, was what happens if you have an animal which is... Uh, 
is owned by a Kohen and a non-Jew in order to prevent the problem of Bechor, can that animal then eat Truma, which introduces yet another level of complexity. But just so you know that um, the, the great rabbinic minds in Israel are, uh, are, are at work trying to figure out how to best utilize the halachic system to deal with the, with the agricultural halacha, which for many, many hundreds of years were barely, uh, barely in force. But now as it's become in force, you have all these creative solutions um, to, to deal with these halachic problems that once again, Baruch Hashem, we are faced with.